This video is brought to you by the Deck of Mini and their Big Bad Booklet series, and by the Roll for Combat Actual Play podcast and their Agents of Edgewatch adventure. Hello and welcome back to the Gallant Goblin. Today I have a box that combines almost all my favorite things. It's got cats, it's got dogs, and minis, and an adventure from the group that brought you the epic encounter sets that I've loved so much. It's got maps, it's got dice, and a GM screen, and it all uses 5e D&D &D rules. If there's cookies and cream ice cream in here, then I've officially found paradise in a box. This is the Animal Adventures RPG starter set by Steamforge Games. Many thanks to them for sending it to us to review with you. This box is aimed at new D&D players who would enjoy role-playing as a dog or a cat in their adventures. It's part of a line of products and minis from Steamforge Games that we'll talk more about at the end of this video. But as always, let's start out by opening up and see what's inside. In the box, we have three cat minis, four dog minis, a rulebook and adventure, a small three panel GM screen, a board of tokens to punch out, seven super cute character sheets, a double sided map, and a set of dice. Let's take a closer look at our cast of characters. Chantilly is a female Labrador fighter. She's a tough as nails frontline skirmisher who isn't particularly fond of her name that's more often associated with delicate lace than with the pointy end of a sword. So she may overcompensate a little bit on the battlefield to prove her mettle. She comes armed, or mouthed as it were, with a great sword and a chain shirt. On the other end of the spectrum, we have Solan, our male Persian warlock kitty. Solan is quite content with basking in the sun atop his elegant daybed. But due to his close connection with Tom of the Alley, the cat trickster god, he is quite a potent spellcaster. With his reputation, he quite often hears the call to arms from his friends, and while he finds dungeon delving a dull affair, he can't say no to his buddies. Whisper is a female sphinx sorcerer who also wields very powerful magic, but who isn't terribly fond of conflict. She's a bit sensitive and prefers the quiet and calm to the calamity of battle. She was blessed by a being known as the Old Striped One at birth, which imbued her with her arcane powers. Elvis is a male cavalier bard and the self-titled creator of laughter and teller of tales. If D&D had a swashbuckler class, Elvis would fit the bill as everything he does is driven by a little extra theatrical flourish, or panache if you will. He comes armed with a rapier, leather armor, and a lute to use when he sings about his own escapades. Molly is a female Lakoi rogue. I hadn't actually heard of this breed before. And as you know, I'm a cat guy. So Lakois were first discovered in 2010 in Virginia, where their story started. They were given the name Lakoi, which means wolf in Greek, due to their werewolf-like appearance. Now, Molly's character sheet here doesn't mention lycanthropy, but nothing is stopping you from adding it. She is a very sticky-pawed rogue, so if you have her around for dinner, best count your fine silver when she leaves to make sure she didn't skitter away with your fanciest dessert spoon. Brianna is a female boxer paladin and a true knight in the Brienne of Tarthvane. She fights to bring light into the darkness for her unnamed deity. And all she wants in the end is a nice, juicy steak to celebrate her many victories. She proudly wields a longsword and wears half-plate armor. Finally, we have Kai, the male Shiba Inu cleric who serves a good mother by trying to be the best Shibu Inu cleric he can be. He wants to use his big heart to bring wellness and happiness to all animal kind. Well, except for those who might be his enemies, for they'll get the hard side of his mace instead. Steamforge Games does have their separate sets of dog and cat minis that you can purchase, and these minis are pulled from those sets and are identical to them, though Chantilly the Lab Fighter is an exclusive to the starter set here. 
Each of these characters has their own little character sheet that's really nicely detailed with all the information the player needs at first level. You of course get all the vital stats in an easy to read format, their attacks, equipment, spells, and special abilities. There's some flavor thrown in as well to help flesh out the personality of the player's chosen character. One interesting thing the designers did was change the unit of measure for speed and range from feet to squares, which should simplify things a bit for new players. The sheets are printed on nice paper stock. The GM screen is pretty adorable. It's certainly the smallest GM screen I've ever seen, but it's not designed to be an all-purpose D&D GM screen that you'll use forever. The information is very much tailored to this particular adventure. Let me turn it around so you can get a better look. So you do get the general basics for 5e combat on one side, but then you also have a table for the random potions that you might pick up, a list of those tokens and their uses, stat blocks for all the included enemies, and then pertinent information for each of your characters, including their spells, HP, and AC, if your players maybe need a little bit of guidance during gameplay. And there's art of Chantilly, Kai, and Solon that graces the outside of the GM screen on this side. And you can see that here. The included navy blue plastic dice set includes two d20s for those advantage and disadvantage rolls, a d12, two d10s with that elusive percentile die, a d8, a d6, and a d4. The 20s on the d20s, the 12 on the d12, the 10 on the d10, the 8 on the d8, and the 6 on the d6 are all replaced with a paw print. Our token sheet has markers for the enemies your players will be facing, including goblins and rats, and for items they may find along the way, like various potion and poison bottles, a key, plus some mysterious cages. The back of the token sheet is just white. The double-sided map, which is on very nice silken paper stock and measures about 16 and a half by 23 and a half inches, features two separate locations on each side. One side has the first and second floor of the mansion, and the other side has the forest and the sewer. The forest in particular is colorful and gorgeous. Each of the four individual maps is 11 by 14 one inch squares. With the electricity and science doodads here, these maps may be a little bit harder to reuse in some other adventures, but it's always nice to expand your map reserves just in case. Now let's take a look at the heart of the matter, The Rulebook and Adventure by lead writer Richard August. The book is broken up into three sections. The first seven pages give you the base level of knowledge that you need to play D&D if you're brand new to the game. It explains the concepts of RPGs, how the dice work, what the attributes mean and how they're used, how the GM decides DCs, and how to play a combat encounter. It's all very clear and concise and should let the players hit the ground running very quickly in their story. The main part of the book is the adventure called The Curse of Dr. Frankenstein. My name, it's pronounced Frankenstein. This is a simplified adventure broken into a number of scenes. Everything is very clearly laid out, including a summary of what happens in each scene, what the player's goal should be in that scene, and who the enemies are. In this adventure, the characters are taking a nice stroll through the woods outside of town when they're ambushed by a pack of goblins trying to kidnap them on behalf of someone known only as the Doc, with a K. After surviving the ambush, they track the threat through the sewers and into his mansion, all along the way encountering his bizarre and dangerous experiments. The adventure just uses the basic six attributes. So instead of having the players roll stealth, for example, they'll just roll dexterity. And just like the epic encounter boxes, the environment is as much a part of each scene and battle as the characters are. If you see it on the map, it probably has a purpose. And care is taken to make sure every attribute gets its moment to shine. So use that dexterity to gain a surprise attack on the villains. Use that wisdom to find hidden potions. And use that intelligence to decipher notes in the library about the monsters you're facing, gaining advantage on future attacks against them. And that constitution? Well, pass your constitution check to avoid becoming nauseated due to the rotten smell of the goblin barracks. And it's not all battles and exploration. We do have that third RPG pillar as well. 
Another friendly awakened animal is discovered in the course of the adventure, letting the players and GM engage in a little role play. And information is given to help facilitate that interaction, as it can often be more challenging to new GMs than combat is. And finally, the characters face the mad doctor himself, with his most dangerous guards and creations. And, well, I'll let you discover what happens from there on your own. And the last chapter gives you the stat blocks for all four enemies presented in the adventure. Overall, this is a fantastic little introduction to D&D for folks who may be a bit younger or who aren't coming from a gamer background necessarily. It's also great for folks who might find these characters a little bit more approachable than your classic fantasy tropes. Another thing that makes this set so nice is the art. I know my April Prime Animal Adventure art when I see it. She also did a lot of work for Humblewood. We'll throw a link to her Instagram page in the video description down below. The beautiful cover art was done by Cindy Avellino, with additional art by Reese Pugh, Sam Sintala, and Christina Reese. And the creator and lead designer of the whole project was Russ Charles. Animal Adventures RPG Starter Set is scheduled to hit store shelves in November 2020 for an MSRP of $39.99, though as always you can probably find it a bit cheaper if you shop around. I mentioned earlier that this was part of a collection from Steamforge Games. They also have several sets of dog and cat minis that are sold separately, as well as some rule supplements and adventures. We'll cover those in a future video here. But if you're looking for a fun way to introduce D&D to new folks over the holidays who might enjoy playing a lab or a Persian cat a little bit more than a half-orc barbarian or a, a tiefling rogue, then this is the box for you. Many thanks to our sponsors for this video. First, the Roll for Combat Actual Play podcast and their Agents of Edgewatch adventure. I've really been enjoying catching up on the show this week as I've been packing up for my trip. The GM, Stephen Glicker, has such a good grasp on the Pathfinder 2E rule set, and it really makes the game play so smoothly for his players, who are also quite knowledgeable themselves. So you get a great adventure with hijinks and drama, but you also get an education about how to play and GM a game game in Pathfinder 2nd Edition. Join me and check it out today, or check out one of their many other Pathfinder or Starfinder shows over at RollForCombat.com. I also want to thank the Deck of Mini and their Big Bad Booklet series. Each monthly booklet gives you everything you need to run a fun adventure with your gaming group, including story hooks, role-playing guides, new items, new stat blocks, layer information, and most importantly, a new Big Bad to torment your players. Some of them are silly, and some of them are terrifying. This month seems to be more on the terrifying side. So this month, come meet Harathos the fallen god of kings, chained inside a stone prison for their attempt to take over the Pantheon. Will you pledge fealty to Harathos, or will you resist their offerings? Subscribe today at BigBadBooklet.com. And thank you for watching today. As you watch this, I'm probably in the middle of house hunting, so I may be a bit slower in responding to comments. Just keep bearing with me for a few more weeks here. You can also find me over on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. We have a lot of awesome plans for more content in 2021, so if you like what we do here, then hopefully we'll be able to share even more fun times with you. If you enjoyed the video today, I always appreciate your likes and subscriptions and shares. For all of that stuff, this helps us keep growing. For now, though, stay safe, have fun, love each other, and I'll see you next time at the Gallant Goblin. Mm -hmm.